Hey everybody, welcome back to my uh, my channel. I'm sorry I've been away for a while and I did update for a while, but a lot of things have happening, so I decided to go ahead and do this uh, quick little update uh, to tell you what's going on and everything. Nothing bad, uh, everything actually really, really good. Uh, first and foremost, I want to tell everybody thank you so much. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I have an uptick on a YouTube channel with a lot of people subscribing and leaving comments so everybody who's watching it and subscribing and leaving comments thank you thank you so much um, the reason why I've been absent for a while without the updates is because um, I'm working on a, a, a lot of projects so besides my normal filming that I normally do with the adult videos and everything else like that which is keeping me busy uh, a lot of that takes a lot of my time with hiring models and filming and production and, and those of you who follow me in the adult industry know that we house the guys here and it takes a lot out of me and as I'm getting older I'm not as young as I used to be when I started this business in 2001 so you know now it's a little bit I'm semi kind of retired in a way so in the meantime um, I decided to write a blog and um, the blog is about my life. Now, people, you could ask me why did you decide to do a blog. I didn't decide to do a blog right away because a lot of people that I encounter, the models that come here, uh, just people that I talk to within the industry, people from my past, my friends, they always say, wow, you have such a fascinating life and an interesting life. And they also tell me, wow, you know, Throughout my whole life, I've always been told I should have a sitcom, I should write a comedy about my life, um, everything that I should write a book. And as I'm getting older and with my experience, especially doing the adult industry, so many people have said to me, wow, you need to write a book. So I'm not much of a writer. And that's my first uh, thing was to do a video blog, which was my channel and talking about my life and the purpose of this video channel was not only talk about my life but talk about filming and um, and all the ins and outs about filming adult videos and just my life in general my health but I decided to write the blog because it really um, the blog goes really more in depth because with the the channel, the YouTube channel, and for those folks out there that, that update three, four times a week, and they're, they're dedicated to their video blog and their YouTube channel, God bless them. You guys do a great job out there. It's just that it just takes a lot of energy when you're filming, the <clears throat> when we're filming and I'm working doing my um, video production for the adult stuff, and then doing this, it takes a lot of time and it just, takes a lot of energy out of me so sometimes this becomes a, um, a little hobby of mine so it's not something that I'm really dedicated to the blog on the other hand seems to be easier so my friend Brian uh, suggested that I do this blog and I'm not much of a writer um, you know writing is not my forte so I decided to do this blog and I'm calling it the Catskill Kid the Catskills Kid is a, a blog about my life. And first of all, people are going to probably say, what's the Catskills Kid? Um, I, I'm from a very small area in upstate New York called Monticello, New York in Sullivan County. Also the foothills of the Catskill Mountains. Um, I stood, that's where I was born and raised. And it's a very important part of my life because um, that my town is a very very interesting town and holds a lot of history and to give you an example of the history of the town before there was disney world before there was flight airline flights and jet planes before there was cruise boats before there was uh, las vegas and resorts area my hometown was the area that was known for its vacationing and resort style hotels the 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 industry was built up back in 1919 with Jewish immigrants coming to the area. When they came to America, a lot of the Jewish immigrants that came to America, a lot of them were farmers. So when they went to the city and they settled in the Lower East Side in Brooklyn, they weren't used to city life. They just weren't accustomed to that life. So my town is two hours uh, about north, uh, I would say northwest out of the city. 
and um, it's it's close enough to the city that you can get there, but it's far enough out of the city where it's mountain, it's fresh air, fresh trees, fresh flowers, grass, beautiful greenery. It's the country. So when the Jewish immigrants started to establish the hotel industry, it was known as, a lot of people know it as not only the Catskills, but they also know it as the Borscht Belt, the mountains. And it's a historical place because that was where the beginning that's where we know comedy of today. Anybody who was a comedian or an entertainer, a dancer, a singer, a lot of them got their start in that area because at one time, especially in the 50s and the heyday of that time, there was over 500 hotels and fi over 500 bungalow colonies, which are more like, um, I would say, like summer type homes that people would come up there. Now, it was a largely 98% um, Jewish community that came up there. So the reason why they called the Borscht Belt is because if you do go to one of those hotels up there, it was kosher meals and it was like a cruise ship on land, but it was all kosher meals and, but they had the entertainment, but that was a place where the Jews can go and feel comfortable because there was a lot of anti-Semitism because back in those days, Jews just couldn't travel freely because you know, if your name was Friedman or Goldman or whatever the case may be, you couldn't travel. And there was not places to travel to because you didn't have Vegas, you didn't have Disney World, you didn't have cruise boats, and you didn't have jet planes back then. So a lot of the Jews that came up there was their vacation place where they felt comfortable and there was no anti-Semitism. So the area grew and grew and grew and grew. And this has nothing to do with Jewish community, but my community uh, was very, very popular and basically made the historic worldwide news um, in a small town in Bethel, New York. Now, Bethel, New York is also located in Sullivan County, about 15, 20 minutes out of Monticello. Monticello was also in Sullivan County, but within Sullivan County, Monticello was the bigger town. And then there were smaller towns like Liberty, South Fallsburg, and one of the smaller hamlets was called uh, Bethel, New York. Bethel, New York, there's nothing there. Uh, back when I was growing up, it was basically the gas station, the post office, and the convenience store all wrapped up in one. And and if you blinked your eye, you would pass it. Most of the town is filled up with fields, farms, uh, mostly a lot of farms, large fields. And there was a gentleman named Max Yasger. He had a dairy farm with huge, huge farms and dairy cows. And back in those days, for you younger generation, we used to have a milkman that they would deliver milk, dairy products, and butter to our home. So uh, he was our milkman, and he served all of Sullivan County. And I'm sure he also served the other counties as well. But he was our milkman. And he he agreed and he leased out his um, his farm to what we know today as most people know it as uh, the Woodstock in summer of 69. Most people think it was in Woodstock, New York, and there is a Woodstock, New York, but Woodstock, New York um, didn't want a bunch of hippies and rock and roll music coming to their sleepy little town. So it ended up they moved the Woodstock Festival to our county, my county, uh, to Bethel, New York, and that's where the uh, Woodstock Festival took place in the summer of 69 in August. So that hit the map because th they were expecting about uh, over 100,000 people to show up, but I think close to a million people showed up, and it went off, and the, the town rallied around all the hippies that were listening to the rock and roll music, and the town supported. There was a lot of people that didn't like it, but it put it pretty pretty much put Sullivan County and Monticello and Bethel, New York on the map on a historical level because of Woodstock of 1969. So that was the claim for fame for our area between the hotels, the kosher hotels, and the, being the first resort area and the school of comedians and entertainments that worked the circuit of the Catskills and got their start there and became popular from there and then moved on to Hollywood and New York and doing movies and things of that nature. So that's why I talked about it because I was born and raised there and I went to high school there and I graduated high school. And of course, you know, me being a teenager in this small town back in the 80s, I was also in the closet and I struggled with my homosexuality. So I put that in my blog as well, talking about living in a small town, being a, a gay young guy and having conflicting feelings about my homosexuality. 
uh, because back then the homosexuals that I ever saw was in the village in New York City in Manhattan and they were either very feminine or if they were masculine they were butch guys with the mustache handlebars and they all wore leather and jeans and I wasn't a leather jeans handlebar kind of guy and I wasn't femme at all so I just didn't fit in I didn't think that I was gay back then I was just going through a phase and then of course in the blog I talk about um, graduating high school my great friendships that I had in high school I was very popular in high school and my my great friends that I had in high school I talk about and then of course moving to Florida when I turned 18 and uh, and when I got to Florida and the struggles that I had to deal with Florida and get acclimated here living in Miami uh, finding a job and working in toxic atmospheres and toxic work environments and, and meeting toxic people so um, so I go through that journey and plus on top of that um, a lot of people see me as oh this guy is put together but I do come from a very dysfunctional family both my parents my mother and father were both dysfunctional but both uh, different sides of the spectrum so I was brought up in a very dysfunctional family with two older sisters who are dysfunctional as well and they have their mental issues so I had to go through that struggle as well. So when I moved to Florida, I had to go through a lot of self-discovery, uh, work my way up, and then of course meeting my boyfriend, um, and then starting this porn business, and that's you know where my life turned, you know. Uh, and then on the blog, I talk about the porn industry, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the behind the scenes, which I never shared with anybody. So that's new on the blog. You know, everybody think that I I live this, you know, uh, I'm uh, this this gay porn mogul, and I have guys, you know, living in my grotto and my mansion and everything else like that. But far from that. Uh, I talk about the horrors, the things that people were taking advantage of me in the in, in the industry, uh, people backstabbing me, uh, stealing my business, and all the craziness, the, the becoming rich, becoming poor, becoming rich, working, not working, dealing with crazy models in my house, uh, and all the mental illness that surrounds the, the porn industry. So it, it was a very toxic industry, and it still is today. But... Um, so I talk about all the good, the bad, and the ugly within the porn industry. So those people who are watching this and follow me, in the, in the who know me as the porn guy, then you'll enjoy reading the blog about everything that really goes on behind the scenes and my personal view and everything that goes on between the companies and, and everything else like that and that toxic environment. Um, and then, of course, I talk about my health. I did touch a little bit about my health on, if you watch my channel, about my diabetes. But as I'm getting older, my health is, is getting worse. So I talk about um, um, my worsening health of particular. So I go through that, my, my, my addiction to food. Um, so I talk about that. And the struggles of everyday life from somebody that's uh, trying to learn about themselves. So when I started this blog, I thought, oh, I'll just do this blog and you know in three months and boom so it's not live yet because when I when I upload it and it goes live I want to have a lot of posts on the blog so this way you can read it and then once I get to a certain space spot when I go live then I will go ahead and start writing um, in real time but for right now I just want to um, um, take the blog and I want to fill it with my stories and it's true stories a lot of people probably read it and say oh come on that can't be true but everything in that blog is very true um, I thought I would knock it out in three months and oh this is gonna be easy but it was actually therapy for me um, and it's taking a longer time it's I think the time I recorded this right now talking to you guys it's been already eight, nine months into the project, and I'm preparing to get it um, launched uh, towards the um, towards the new year, or right a little bit right after the new year. Uh, writing, although I'm not a writer and I don't consider myself a professional writer, it takes a lot for a lot out of me because it's it's an emotional journey. Not only am I writing my my feelings and my emotions. I'm I'm sharp as a whip and I remember everything. So what happens is, it's I'm, I'm when I'm writing it, it's it's self help. I'm discovering a lot about myself. It's therapy, but not only is it therapy, but I'm laughing, I'm crying, I'm remembering things that wow, you know, it just totally amazed me. And then when I read it back, 
um, I'm like, wow, I can't believe I, I had this life. It's just amazing life. So, and now I understand why people will say to me, you should write a book. So that's why I'm doing the blog, because the blog really takes place the time I was born, where I was raised, and then moving on to my, my life to now and what's going on now once we start writing in live so it's very so the blog was very important to me a very emotional learning um, because of uh, the software I'm, I'm using the blog is coming out good my grammar is horrible my spell is horrible so what happens because of the software I'm using it corrects my grammar corrects my spelling so because of that's very helpful it's starting to make sense and it's starting to come alive the blog so when you read it it has a nice flow and an understanding you can visualize it as a book or even a movie so my friend my close friends I have two close friends David and David so one of the David's um, that are my childhood friends that I grew up with. One of them said, why are you doing this blog? Oh, are you trying to make millions of dollars? So, no, my intentions of the blog is not to make millions of dollars. I mean, I hopefully, when it, if it turns into a book and a movie, I make millions of dollars. But no, not really. Um, the reason why I'm doing the blog is because I'm leaving it as my legacy. The blog is very important to me because as a gay man, I don't have children. I don't want children. I have no desire to have children. And when I die, my family bloodline ends with me. So I want my nieces and their children to have something that I left over as a legacy so they can read it or watch it if it turns into a book, if it turns into a movie, that it's etched in history in a time frame. So it's my legacy. And it's also my last will and testament to the world that I had the last laugh, I had the last word because of all the people that did me wrong, screwed me over, being in a toxic situation, this is my last oomph to say, fuck you, you know, um, you know, I got the last word and, and I told my truth and I told a real story. So people out there that are listening to reading my blog or perhaps it turns into a movie or a book and all that good stuff, then people are going to say, wow, this guy was a fascinating guy and he got screwed over because I think a lot of people can relate to everything that I've been through. Even if you have an eating disorder, coming out of the closet, starting a business and getting screwed over, being in a toxic atmosphere, living with somebody who has mental illness or growing up in a mentally ill family you know and all these things that are are, are are evolved around that you know I think that that's something that the blog will hit you know home with a lot of people and when you read the blog um, you'll laugh and you'll cry and uh, it's 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 a very nice blog so hopefully in the long run but for right now I'm not looking for it to be a book or a movie I just want to write it and get it out there and then see where the blog takes me so with that, what I'm going to do is it's not live, the blog. It's not up on, online yet. But with that being said, below, check out below, I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the newsletter. So if you want to click on it and subscribe to the newsletter, go right ahead and do that. Now, the newsletter is a private newsletter. It's not going to be used for marketing. So if you do subscribe to it, I'm reassuring you it's not going to be you're not going to be spammed to death it's not going to be sold to some marketing firm to sell you popcorn and jelly beans and all that crazy stuff so it's a private one and I and I and I respect that it's your email and you're not going to be bombarded with anything the reason for the newsletter and subscription is when I go live and any updates or anything like that you guys who subscribe to it will get first crack of what's going on um, so that's the purpose of subscribing but I promise you you're not going to get flooded with emails and all kinds of crazy spam so if you want click down the link below uh, and please uh, subscribe to the newsletter and also subscribe to my youtube channel because i'm going to start updating as well because i noticed with the uptick with the comments and everything else like that i do have some feedback with some of the comments that i've been reading which will be in the next update so for now subscribe hit the notification button it doesn't it doesn't cost you anything to just to press those little buttons and i'll see you on the next episode thank you again and see you soon